Hey there, it's Pete over at The Samplist and today we are checking out Spitfire Audio's very newly released BBC Symphony Orchestra piano. And it's great to see that Spitfire Audio have teamed up once again with the BBC Symphony Orchestra to give us this great addition to the BBC SO library. This Steinway Model D Grand has been captured with pristine quality at the home of the BBC, the Maida Vale Studio. With three versions to choose from, be it the Try Before You Buy Discover library, or the All You May Ever Need core version, or finally the fully loaded Pro version, this piano is the most versatile and detailed piano in the Spitfire range yet. There are differences between the three versions, so I'll very quickly summarize before we jump into the video. The Professional features the full sampling depth and the full range of mixes and signal options. This totals 15 signals and mixes, as well as hammer and pedal volume control. And it downloads approximately at 35.1 gigabytes. The Core also offers full sampling depth and a smaller range of signals and one standard mix option. And this downloads at approximately 2.7 gigabytes. The Discover is the light version, the try before you buy. And it runs in the BBC SO newly updated Discover plugin with limited sampling depth and one signal. And it downloads approximately at 230 megabytes. I've been really lucky to get a pre-release version of this library and I've been playing it like mad all week and no matter which edition you choose there are some great piano sounds here. The BBC SO Piano Pro sells for £149 and there is a promo cross grade at £99. The BBC SO Piano Core sells for £79 and there is a promo cross grade at £59. So what you need to do is log in to your account and depending on what you already own, you can see exactly uh, what your price is. And the promotional intro price runs until Thursday, July the 20th. Now in this video, we're going to look at all three editions of the piano. We're going to start off with the Discover and then work our way through the core and then finally the professional and then I've thrown it into a composition which I will talk about a little bit more later. Without further ado let's just jump straight into this piano library. And here we have loaded up in the newly updated Spitfire Audio Discover plugin, the BBC Symphony Orchestra Piano. And this is the Discover version. So it's the light version, the small version, the try before you buy version. And I have to admit out of the box, it sounds gorgeous. <laughs> I can hear the room sound, uh, the Made of L studio, and it is so clean in terms of sampling, and the range is just gorgeous. It's beautiful at the top, and if we go down towards the low end, we've got a low C. And the mid-range. Yeah, just sounds amazing. And we have a control as well in the middle. So this is reverb. Um, it's very, very clean at the moment. And if we just bring it up a little bit.
so you can wash the sound a little bit more. But we've got some nice dynamic control. We can play really, really softly. And then you can hammer it a little bit more. If you want to. So considering it has a limited sampling range and it's a very, very lightweight library, it just sounds gorgeous. But you can sit there for ages just... playing and enjoying yourself so yeah the discover version is a fantastic gateway into this library now at the top we've got the controls so you can load up the core now we have the full sampling depth Now you can hear it is far more velocity sensitive. So you can really um, sort of hear the dynamic range. So again, light. Absolutely love it. And then because it's it's got the full sampling depth, you can really hear like the thunder in the bass. Okay, and then it, once again towards the top end as well, just sounds beautiful. It's a gorgeous piano. And then what I noticed when we jump up to the core version is that it really does cut through the mix. So I'm not really into comparing it to other pianos because it's a different style because it's designed to cut through a symphonic orchestra mix. But I love using the Olafur Arnold's Toolkit. One of my all-time favorite pianos features on lots of stuff, stuff and things and... Uh, bits of music there we go being a bit more specific there but yeah the, the point is you just got this like quality of sound this depth of sound and the Olafur Arnold's toolkit had it as well that piano but that's more of a felt piano and it's it's just got this like I say clarity going all the way through it It's 
it's got movie score written all over it. But again, if you're using it with the BBC SO, which I feel is more um, for uh, sort of detailed and realistic um, compositions and mock-ups, it's going to work in both scenarios. But again, if I'm using this for just, you know, general playing, it's going to sound great. Um, yeah. Yeah. You can spend all day playing with it. Um, lovely. Now, the key thing here is, if we go into the effects, uh, we've got reverb, and now we've got tightness, pedal volume, and hammer volume as well, which is really, really good. But what uh, I cannot see currently is the different um, signals, because they are not here. We're in the core version, so we've got one mix. But really... It might be everything you need because it does sound amazing. sounds incredible and again you can really just hear that dynamic range so again if we're playing a little bit heavier foot off the uh, sustain pedal but there we go that is the core version so we've got a bit more in terms of controls however um we are limited to one mic mix and if you remember the bbc symphony orchestra i believe um so i did start off with the core version it had two mixes and they sounded amazing so the big uh, sort of circle the dial in the middle does control the reverb but you can get it to control the tightness the pedal volume and the hammer volume but for me I love the sound of the mechanical parts of the piano however when you are making production music a lot of people do like it when there's no sound whatsoever so it's a very very cool feature so there we go we have the um, core version and now we're going to go to the pro and the pro version, the biggest change straight away you'll see is when I click on the mic mixes, we have all of these different signals and there are plenty of them. So just mix one, sounds like this.
it's instant cinema. And I get why Spitfire Audio are saying that some of their most versatile piano. It just sounds stunning. And it's so dynamic. I love we're doing like something in octaves. Just an octave there but you get the idea it just sounds gorgeous now we've got as i said so many different mixes to go through but the second main mix sounds like this getting carried away there but you get the idea um it just sounds gorgeous now there are moments where i am sort of hammering the odd note probably getting a bit carried away there but again it just emphasizes the dynamic range and it is purely my playing um, I always say I'm not a piano player, but of course, when you compose music and, um, you know, I was, I'm a guitarist for her, but you, you learn, you practice, you play, you spend every day playing piano. In fact, I play piano more than I do uh, guitar now. So, um, yeah, I've got my own little sort of busking style, but I can appreciate the feel of this piano. Um, and I do play live piano sometimes, but... Yeah, it, it just, I don't know, the, the response. And I know you can, you know, control in the middle, the tightness. I'm not even going to touch it. It just sounds so responsive. Um, and again, you've got the pedal volume and the, the hammer controls, which I would leave alone. Oops, I've just turned up something. There we go. That is the tightness. And I get the idea. That is the Piano Mix 2. And then you can build your own mixes um so i'm just going to load up the ambient the tree my good friend the outriggers and let's go something on the hammers as well and um, there we go i'll just see what it sounds like because it's going to sound like pretty cool now it's loading so it's a slightly bigger footprint um than uh, obviously just a standard mix and that's again okay so i don't know how big it's going to be probably about 800 ish megabytes could be wrong and i'm pretty much just sort of riffing here vamping waiting for that number to go up but obviously you you've got one articulation you're not going to be key switching or messing around so as soon as it's loaded into memory um yeah it's good to go so i can start playing now and it will make some sounds
and it's still loading. But again, I've loaded up four mic signals. There we go. So we can address, sorry, adjust these as we see fit. Excuse me, that was a bit silly. Yeah. And you can blend all of these different microphones. Excuse me. Uh, so that's you've got the trees, got outriggers, got ambient, you got mono mics, uh, you got the sides, you got the balcony. If you just want like a really sort of cool washed out sound, I'll get the ambient and the outriggers again. Bring the tree down. Um and I believe here, yeah, the atmosphere. La -da -dum. So again, it's got a load. Uh, and we could talk about the middle section here. So if we bring up the reverb um, quite nicely, it will sound quite washed out. Yes, so you can have some pretty cool sounds. Excuse the sound of my sustain pedal hitting my floor. That is not part of the library. Um, yeah, but like I say, you can just add to your sound. Now, um, if we use the uh, mid mic as well. So I'm going to add a little more definition to the sound now. And it's still loading. Um, obviously, if you load everything up, it's going to be like every single mic position is going to be quite uh, crazy. So we're not going to do that, but I think we're done now. So you can be very very creative with the sounds that's quite nice in fact let's turn the reverb off just to hear what it sounds like without it oh excuse me Hello, G. So you can play around with the mics and you have 15 mic signals. So, uh, sorry, 13 mic signals and two mixes. So really putting this piano in any situation you want, you really, really can. And it can be very, very creative with the sounds. And of course, we've got the option to remove the pedal volume and the hammer volume. And we could adjust the tightness. But again, I love the organic sounds of a piano being played. So I wouldn't want to remove any of that. So my initial thoughts are, this is a gorgeous sounding piano. It sounds lovely out of the box and it is 
very very versatile i could just use this as my main piano in so many different applications it's untrue of course i do love using the uh felt piano so the olafar uh felt things and this is a different kettle of fish this is a piano that will cut through an orchestral mix a symphony orchestra now we are going to throw it into a composition and what i've done is I've uh, created a piece and it uses a different type of orchestra, so it's more contemporary. So I'll list all the instruments, but it is generally um, a Spitfire audio extravaganza. It's got all my little um, go-tos like Phobos and Tundra, and it's just supposed to sound a little bit more cinematic because... There's going to be lots of examples of this like smashing its way through an orchestra because it will cut through the mix like anything. And if you're playing a piano concerto, for example, um, yeah, it's, it's just going to sound absolutely incredible. So as a lot of us are media composers and we compose different types of music, I thought it'd be kind of cool to put it in that situation. And I have used my full master chain as well because in my experience using pianos they sound gorgeous um when you're just sort of composing orchestrating layering etc but it's when you put on your signal chain that it starts um well like the the sound might change or there might be imperfections there and i was really curious to see exactly what this sounds like so i did put a lot of time into this demo um yeah, so, you know, we could just really evaluate how it sounds. But my initial impressions were, straight away, it sounds lovely. And it's a joy to play. And I do own a lot of pianos, and this is up there with the best. But how is it to compose with? So, yeah, without further ado, let's just listen to the composition and talk about it afterwards.
our Finnish piece is not a symphonic orchestra, you may have noticed. It is a more contemporary orchestra. I've already said that the BBC SO Piano Pro can cut through any symphonic mix. If you're doing a giant piano concerto, it's going to sound amazing. And it has that room sound, that concert hall sound, and the rich timbres. It's got the, the high end and the high dynamics that just cut. But then it's also got the, the softer, more elegant side. So I wanted to try it in a more contemporary orchestra. And that's what I've created. Now, this is 95% Spitfire. I'm using several different Evos. Got the Olafur Arnold's Chamber Evos, got the London Contemporary Orchestra, the Texture Library. And then strings are provided by Albion 5 Tundra, so high strings and low strings. Uh, swarms, got woodwind swarms and orchestral swarms. We have the tuba from Albion 2. The string quartet, I will talk about in a moment, but that is not Spitfire. And then we have a BBC SO Piano Pro, and I've stuck to the main mix for four of the channels, then use the second mix for one other. But I have used varying amounts of reverb, which um, just create or creates a lot more atmosphere. And of course, I've used the Olifer Kalimba. And then my all time favorite Spitfire synth, Phobos. I love Phobos. It's my go to. I use it on so many things. And it's just sort of hammering away a uh, sort of percussion part. Lovely. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about these other instruments, but they are providing a fantastic foundation. And it's just a track that's all about layering. The string quartet does provide some melody as well, but the piano is our focal point. So let's just hear the intro. It's a good example of the piano being played quite softly and it does go into just some standard chords with a tiny sort of counter motif going on. What really comes through is the room sound and the mechanical noises of the piano, but the timbre of the piano is absolutely stunning. So I think it's absolutely amazing. And then we're going into the main melody so we had this piano at the top and there is a generous amount of reverb because i'm going cinematic so yeah i want it to sort of kind of be washed away And you can hear that low rumble going on. If I just solo the octaves. And of course, it's the pro version, so you can select a different mic. This is just the main mix, and I love the main mix but you can use different types of mics. You can remove the mechanical sounds of the piano to clean that up. Or of course you could just EQ any low resonances out, but I love it. 
we talk about clean pianos, uh, but the room sound just really, I don't know, just gives it character. Fantastic. Now, the next section, I'm not going to play the piano solo uh, because it's got all my favourite Phobos tricks in, which is, um, yeah, it's adding and automating um, for show automation. There might not be anything there. Uh, there isn't. There we go. But it's kind of like introducing this rhythm um, normally I fade it in, but I'm not going to fade it in now. Uh, but yeah, so we've got this cool sort of big rhythm and these two rhythms working together. And then it's all about layering. The The thing about the Evos, the, the MIDI is really, really simple. You're just help, like holding sustained notes and keeping notes pressed as much as you can just to create these really sort of interesting moving parts. So... Yeah, really, really easy. It's in the key of C minor, so I'm just holding a fifth virtually all the way through. Definitely got that G going. And yeah, it just builds tension. Um, the, the string quartet are playing some melodic material to sort of play off against the piano. Um, yeah, let's just play the section, and then it's got this just gorgeous build-up. go it's a lovely build-up no need for simple swells and all that kind of thing going on it just works now the piano part I'm just going to solo this again I'm using quite generous reverb but this section just sounds wonderful You can hear why I double or sort of play little counter motifs with the kalimba. If I take that out. It just adds a bit more interest and it sounds a bit more metallic. Love it, but again, the piano part is amazing. I can hear here, here, um, here, 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 here. Hmm. at the very start. Again, I've mentioned this already, but if you're playing a note, it is very velocity sensitive. Which I really, really like going to do that. So it's got nice uh, attack. I was taught not to use the word nice at school. Let's try a better word. It's got this sort of biting attack for the first note of that phrase, but then it kind of softens out. <laughs> Go. 
I think Phobos was a little bit off there because I started midway through bar. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of like you can hear just the the range of dynamics, and then it just sort of fades out into something, into nothing, into longliness, longingness. I don't know. It's late. I'm losing the plot. And there we go. So the the piano really does cut through the mix. And that's really what I'm looking for. I, I've I've got a lot of piano libraries and I love different types of piano and my favourite Spitfire piano has always been the Olafur Arnold's toolkit. I absolutely love that piano but it's a different type isn't it? It's a felt piano and it's a bit more intimate and a bit noisier. This is a clean, strong, powerful piano that is very very versatile in timbre and has this amazing room sound. Yeah, D different instruments. Um, and I don't want to start doing a comparison. I mean, I love the Hans Zimmer piano as well. Um, yeah, it, it's it's ever since I bought it, again, that's kind of instant cinema. But this is just something a little bit different. And yeah, I'm uh, really enjoying using it. What are my thoughts about the BBC SO Piano Pro? I really like it. Pianos are very touchy things. That is not a joke that, that they are. And it, it's all about the timbre for me. And this is bright and it cuts through, but it has the ability to be soft and intimate. And it's got the superb mechanical sounds of the piano and also the room sound baked in, which again, you can play around with. If you have the pro version, you can use any of the mic signals and sort of dial in a tone that you like and eliminate that but why would you eliminate it part of the appeal is that we have the amazing room sound going on and that's what i think is really really important you've got character in this piano and there there's stacks of the piano and then we've got the three different versions so starting at the top with the uh, pro version yeah, um, all the control over the mic signals and the noises and the control over that is exceptional. But if you go to the core version, it's not just a sketching piano or something to go, you know, sort of on your travels with and stick on your laptop. It is absolutely perfect to score with. And if you're doing something which involves a... Um, sort of orchestral piano it is perfect yes it's not as versatile as the pro version but that's you know just something you've got to work out is really all those mic mixes is that what you need for me yes it is i love having total control over it i use the symphonic uh spitfire libraries and uh, have the pro versions because i really do sort of hear and feel a difference in the different mic signals and the different mixes so yeah really really useful and then of course we have the try before you buy which i love the fact spitfire have done that so you can just get a feel for it because the feel of this piano i'm, I'm using my midi uh, controller but if i close my eyes and just play i feel like i am playing um the piano in situ so yeah, um, I'm, I'm doing my procrastination noises. Oh yes, mm -hmm. it is fantastic, and there aren't many dedicated symphonic pianos out there, and this really does fit the bill. But it's not just big symphonic music you can use this in. I I'll be using this on crime. Always mention my tension. Got to mention my tension and uh, just general scoring. I mean, you can hear how great it sounds, like this 
this piece of music it, it just really really fits that kind of um underscore and that contemporary underscore style it, it's just lovely is it a recommendation yes it is a huge recommendation it's something a bit different and when i compare it to my other pianos i do have some other non-spitfire go-to pianos um I, I really want to play this a lot more now not just because it's new and shiny it's because it's um just a fantastic piano instrument and it's great to have that versatility all that leads me to say is thank you once again to Spitfire Audio for sending over a copy of the BBC SO Piano Pro and the associated versions to me so I could make this review. I've had lots of fun working with this piano all week and I think if you pick it up you will just really, really enjoy using it as well. If you're not done so already please subscribe to our channel and of course feel free to leave likes or leave comments on this video or any other video that you would like to. And then head over to the samplist.com to see what's going on in the world of virtual instruments. And of course, please, please have a fantastic day, create lots of music and generally enjoy yourself in VST Live. Until next time, have a great day and we'll speak again soon. Take care.